In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit more about APIs and specifically some of the terms often used around APIs, words like method or argument. Uh, in particular, I'm going to start with methods. Uh, methods are basically another word for functions in um, APIs, and sometimes they actually are called a function, depending on the, the API that you're using. And like a function in Excel or in R or other programming languages, different functions do different things. So when you visit an API page, I'll show you an example here. This is the data.police.uk API. You'll see a list of methods. Um, and these different methods, these different um, functions, if you like, will give you different answers to different questions. In this particular case, the police uh, API will give you, allow you to ask questions about crimes at street level, or crimes at no location, or information about neighborhoods, or stop and searches, and so on. Each of these is a different method that allows you to get different data in response to a different question. So probably the best way to think about methods are different types of question. Here's the They Work For You API, which provides political data, and I'll just um, expand it a little bit so you can see on this side, on the right hand side, the API functions. Similar sort of thing, if you want to get MPs, use that one. If you want to get constituencies, use that one. So again, you can use different functions or different methods to ask different questions. And the Postcodes API is um, another example. And again, we've got the general Postcodes method which allows you to get information about a postcard. Uh, we've got the um, longitude and latitude, uh, latitude, sorry, um, and so on. So these, random is a different one, um, terminated postcards, and so on. So this is another way of, of seeing different methods. So that's what, what a method is, it's like a function. The key thing is to always look at the documentation surrounding these to give you more information. So if I click on street level crimes on police, uh, on the police API, it tells you more information about different elements of this particular question and what a response might look like. I'm going to come on to some of this later on. So that's methods. Um, the, uh, you will often see the method or the function in the URL of um, the results that you're getting. So in this particular case, this is using the forces method of the police API. And the forces method brings back, but it's a very simple method, it brings back a list of all the forces in the UK. And for each force, you have two pieces of information, the name of the force and the ID that's used for it. When you use a method in an API or when you use an API generally, you're quite often going to need to supply arguments. Arguments um, are basically the ingredients of your function. So in the same way as when you use a function in a spreadsheet, you have to put something in brackets. When you use a, an API, when you use a query in an API, quite often you need to include some information about what your question actually is. And this information typically will come in what's called key value pairs, um, separated by an equal sign in the middle. So uh, the key will be something uh, like the type of information that you're supplying, then an equals, and then the value will be the specific information. So for example, if I wanted to get information on an MP called Brian Smith, then the key might be something like MP name, then equals, and then Brian Smith will be the value. Because a query might need more than one piece of information, each of these key value pairs will have an ampersand in the middle to separate them. In the same way as you might have a comma or a semicolon between arguments in a function when you use it in a spreadsheet. So in this particular um, example, in fact, if I go back to this example here, if I can find an example, here we go. 
So on data.police.uk, we've got the basic um, part of the URL, the basic part of the query, and it's using the um, crimes street method, so street level crimes, that's the, the method, and it's asking for all crime, and then here are the key value pairs. The first one is latitude. We need to give it the latitude if we want crimes at a particular location. So this is always going to be lat equals, but we can supply the value that we want. Then we've got another pair here, and that again is always going to be LNG because this is the longitude, and then equals, and then we specify the particular longitude. And then finally, we can supply a date as well, which is in the form of a year and month with a dash in between. So we've got three ingredients here, the latitude, the longitude, and the date. Each one is separated by an ampersand, and each one has this key value pair. So the key is, the, is a name referring to the type of information that we are giving, uh, and then an equals, and then the particular value of that piece of information. So that's what we mean by passing arguments or, or giving uh, arguments to a URL. Um, now sometimes the argument doesn't come in that form. So in, in this particular example, the postcodes API, we just have a slash and then the actual postcode because it only takes one ingredient, it only takes a postcode, so we don't need to specify a key to tell it what it is. But in a lot of APIs, you'll have this key value pair structure. And the result, as you can see, is in this, this is JSON format, which we'll cover in a separate video. To give you another example, this is the They Work For You API, and you can see here it referring to arguments. So this is where it's useful to know about this jargon. The method is get constituency, and that means that uh, in this particular case, we start with a URL that has get constituency, and then we've got a name value. So in this case, name equals Birmingham Perry Bar, and then we've got a postcode and um, key, and the value of that is B422SU. We've also got an output um, key as well. So we've got three pieces of information, name, postcode, and output. Output is what type of structure we want the data in. And this says JS, which means a JSON format, which is a particular data structure. What's quite nice about this API is you can explore it without writing any code. So you can, you can see we've got a box for each of these first two values, and then a, a tick box for the third, so it will generate this URL for us to show us the structure of what it should look like. Oops, skipping ahead there, sorry. Um, and that's the output there. Now, uh, you might have noticed on that previous page a mention of API keys. And this is another piece of jargon to be familiar with when you're dealing with APIs. An API key is basically a password. It's a way of using the API um, and it's it's used in a, for, for one main reason and that's to be able to monitor and in some situations block your access to the API. Some APIs are completely open and unlimited. You can ask as many questions as you like and you don't need a password, you just um, give it a query and get the results back. But a lot of APIs will put limits on the amount of queries you can ask, for the obvious reason that if you're asking millions of queries, if you're running um, code which asks lots of questions every second, or you're running some sort of app which is used by millions of people, then um, that can be quite a lot of um, pressure on the server that's providing the answers. So to address this, some APIs will have a key. And that basically is, it's like I said, it's like a password, but also a little bit, a bit like a username. So if they detect a lot of traffic coming from your key, then they can block that without affecting everyone else. It can also be used to introduce charges. Some APIs will allow you to use it for free up until a certain limit, and then they will either block you or ask you to pay some money. Um, a lot of Google APIs are like this. It allows you to build apps and try things out without having to pay anything. 
But if your app becomes successful and has millions of users, then you're going to need to start paying for all of those queries. And it's used like the, the key value pairs um, that we've already looked at. It's, it's passed as one of the key value pairs along with all the others. So it might be something like key equals or password equals or username equals or something like that. Normally it's key equals followed by your key. And you get it by signing up in the same way as you get a username and password. On the API page, there will be some way to sign up or sign in, and then it will give you your key and normally an explanation of how to use it. And like I say, normally what you do is you put key equals followed by your key, which is a series of letters and numbers uh, in your query. One final thing to be aware of is that some APIs have limits. I've mentioned um, the limits are uh, before you start to pay. Some of them are simply limits um, before you can no longer use them. In these situations, you might want to try multiple APIs. So for example, if you're using Google Maps and you hit the limit there, you might use something like Yahoo Maps API if you're getting similar data. Or you can do it on multiple days because often these reset after one day. Um, or you might want to uh, reduce the queries that you're making. For example, if you were querying about postcodes, make sure you reduce your list of postcodes so that you're not repeating any postcode more than once because it appears more than once in your data. So some key points to sum up there. First of all, we've got this jargon of methods. Um, an API might have different methods. These are just different questions that you can ask. And normally they are used by changing the URL that you're using to ask the question and get the data. You might also need to specify parameters, particular ingredients of your question, such as the location of the map that you want to draw or the postcode that you want data on. And you may need an API key as well, which is normally included in the query. And again, that query is normally in the shape of a URL. We'll cover uh, separately how to form that URL and get that data. Normally you have to write some code such as in R or Python, um, but I just want you to understand at this point what an API, what the jargon is it really surrounding an API. By the way, as a final point, you can actually make your own API as well. This can be quite useful if you want to supply data from uh, a scraper, for example, or an RSS feed to um, some code that you're writing. An RSS feed is uh, perhaps one of the most obvious types of API. You can also get APIs from many tools that you use to manipulate data. So morph.io, which is a scraping tool, that provides an API for any scrapers that you write. Airtable, which is a way of um, managing data and databases, has APIs. And uh, you can use Sheets U to work with the Google Sheets API as well.